Well, hello and welcome. My name is Mark Eppner. I'm a Chicago-based pilot with over half of my 2,000 plus hours in a Cirrus SR22. Currently, I fly this 2011 normally aspirated G3, but also fly other aircraft when the opportunity presents itself. I love flying every bit as much as you do and look for ways to share that common bond through multiple paths, including this channel, as well as Simple Flight Radio, which you can find at simpleflight.net. My goal for the channel is to share my passion for aviation with others that share that same sentiment and do so with an eye towards proficiency, safety, and fun. Well, as you have been hearing for way too long, my plane has been in maintenance for over two months. In December, we had some cylinder problems, so the cylinders needed to be repaired and reworked. And then when we finally got it back, it was time to go into its annual inspection at the latter part of December, and it took all the way through January. So I picked her up in early February, and now I have to finish the process of breaking in those new cylinders. Now we'll talk about what that means in today's video, but suffice it to say that I have to run the engine at cruise power for an extended period of time. So today we're gonna take a trip to Danville, Illinois, and that was determined based on a very scientific dartboard method of picking an airport that I'd never been to and one that was far enough away that we can put some extended time on the engine. So there's no time like the present to get this going, so with no further ado, Let's go flying. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and get our ATIS. That's COM2. And the arrow's already down there. Flip flop yes, it over. Information, bravo. Bravo. K. D. N. V. Vermilion Region, Regional in Danville, Illinois. So that's going to go through there. We'll go out to the west first. All right, line up and right. 1 6, uh, 3 C or Delta. Fellas, 49 Victor, stay parking. 5-6, 49 Victor. You said Hangar 6? Affirmative. Fellas, 49 Victor, Hangar 6, taxi via Yankee Delta Cross runway 1-2. Okay, Main full rich. Open. Landing light coming on. Yankee Delta. Airplane is off the runway one, two, down there. Cirrus Niner 7 3 Sierra Delta Northwest bound to right turn out, 1 2 one, zero, one, zero, runway 1-6, one, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, right turn out, on one six three Sierra Delta. Executive Tower, Mooney 7, Lima Uniform, holding short, 2, 4, ready for departure. Mooney 7, Lima Uniform, Exec Tower, traffic departs from runway 16, the Sirius rolling now. Additional traffic is not a mile to the northwest of Cessna for runway 16, runway 2, 4, line up and wait. Line up and wait, 2, 4, 7, Lima Uniform. Cessna 8, 4, hotel traffic holds the position intersecting runway 2, 4, is it Mooney? Roger, 8, hotel. Laps up, yaw damper on. Clutter that. I don't know if you can see all that traffic. I say that a lot. I'm always so, I don't know if it's impressed or what. Last name for us, Hellish, be advised, multiple departures departing Executive Airport, Northwest Sound, one Sirius and one A uh, Mooney. Roger, we'll be looking for the traffic. Mooney, some uniform advised of Sirius across your departure corridor in sight, Northwest Sound in sight. I think I may need to fly. Let's talk about, let's talk about the Break-in procedures for new or repaired departure. Good morning, cylinders. Romeo's with you. Uh, lovely. Do not run the engine above 75% power in a cruise setting, or the probability of glazing cylinder bores is increased. Glazing cylinder bores requires cylinder removal, honing, and installing new piston rings. Papa Grove Air Motive does not warranty this condition. Your ability to keep the engine temperature well in the green arc, which we are, and within a power range of 65 to 75 percent power will be the key to a successful break-in. Now, if I go to the Cirrus break-in procedure on an engine, now that's an engine, so it's a little bit different, but kind of isn't. <laughs> so. I'm going to open up the POH, scanning for traffic. But it says minimum a 75% power. My guys say maximum 75% power. I had always heard, yeah, you want 75 or higher 
during that, especially during the first two hours, but then of course for the first 25 or until oil consumption stabilizes. So the problem is we have the manufacturer asking us to fly the airplane at 75% or above. The people that did the engine work at 65 to 75%. And there are others that suggest even other methods to break in the engine. So it's very confusing for the owner-operator who wants to protect this big investment of an engine and is being told by the experts, and I say that with air quotes, uh, different methodologies to accomplish that. And this is on 30, 40, 50-year-old technology. It shouldn't change that much, but it just goes to show that with everything, there are multiple opinions, and for the user, in this case, the owner-operator, as I described it, can be a very confusing and potentially expensive decision to make. So what's happening when you're breaking in cylinders? This may be more information than some of you want to know, so I'll get through it relatively quick at a high level. So. You have a piston inside a cylinder, but it doesn't quite fill up the cylinder. And you need to because there you need the pressure and you need to prevent oil from getting up in the combustion chamber. And so they have these rings. Again, they're flat. I'll put a picture of one with a little cut in it. And they're going to snap into a ridge in the piston, on the piston, and it will take it out to the walls of the cylinder, or of, yeah, the cylinder. And you have a compression ring that, again, separates the top from the bottom, if you will, of the piston. And you have an oil control ring that prevents oil from getting up into the up top part of the cylinder, which we'll call the combustion chamber. And by the way, if the gaps in these rings, which allow it to snap in, line up, you can get oil through there. So they stagger them. So that doesn't happen. But when uh, I'll leave it at that, right? So we're, what we're trying to do is seat the rings so that it's perfect. And it there's also something called cross-hatching in the cylinder walls. It just looks like tiny scores of lines going this way and that way. And in that, even though it looks so minute, actually can put oil in there, which helps the uh, keep the temperatures, keep the engine healthy, is oil in the cylinder walls, in these cross hatches. And when this talks about glazing, it means the cross hatch is going to become smooth, and now you can't have any oil there, which is bad for an engine. You'll start, you'll see metal in the oil. Uh, it's just not a good situation, and that's why I talked about if you get glazing, they're going to have to re-hone it. Hone it is kind of drilling in this cross-hatching in the cylinder, which means the cylinder just got a little bit bigger, and so you're going to need to have the right rings to fill in the gap. Engines run tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the airplane. And this one, that new one, probably is about sixty to seventy thousand dollars. So you want to take care of your engine. Autopilot off, hand flying, full rich, but gas undercarriage mixture prop. Ninety two knots. One way is clear. Couple of, about a half an inch off the manifold pressure. Speed coming down.
Here we go. Danville traffic, uh, Red Cirrus 973 Sierra Delta taking runway 21, be departing to the north, Danville. Torpedo heat coming on. All my switches, fuel pump is on, mixture is rich. Flaps are properly set, mags are set, or mags are both, I should say it that way. Get over this snow and ice area, roll to a clean area. Let's go flying. Flaps up, yaw damper on. As we approach Chicago Executive, we can state mission accomplished. We put some good, consistent time on the engine. I got to land at a new airport, and I checked out some Warbird restoration, which I really didn't talk about in the video, but at Danville, Illinois, they do Warbird restoration, and I got a sneak peek at some of the work that was going on in exchange for a promise that I wouldn't share any pictures. So I'm a man of my word, and I'm not going to, but it was pretty cool to see. And of course, the best thing about the trip I got to de-stress. I got to enjoy just being without a cell phone, in an airplane, seeing the beautiful countryside. I hope today was helpful and gave you some insight into how we break in an engine. But if you have any comments or questions about the process, please leave them in the comments below. And while you're at it, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of any new videos. So I'm looking forward to having you join me next week as we continue to share our passion for flying. Until then, blue skies and tailwinds.